Section 9.2 is called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, and in a moment we'll review what a converse is. But first off, let's take a look at what's in the first paragraph, where it says the three positive integers that work in the Pythagorean theorem are called, and the words that go in the blank there would be Pythagorean triples. So Pythagorean triples. And there are many Pythagorean triples. For example, 8, 15, and 17 are Pythagorean triples because 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to 17 squared. So those three numbers work in the Pythagorean theorem and therefore they're called Pythagorean triples. Over on the right hand side of your sheet, notice that there is an example of an ancient Babylonian tablet, it's a little bit hard to read, but it says this ancient Babylonian tablet called Plimpton 322 dates sometime between 1900 and 1600 BCE. It suggests several advanced Pythagorean triples such as 1,679, 2,400, and 2,929. So Pythagorean triples were discovered quite a while ago, looking like uh, up to at least 4,000 years ago where right triangle characteristics were used. Now here's some other Pythagorean triples down here that are more common. The 3, 4, 5, and the 6, 8, 10, and the 9, 12, 15 ones are quite common. We see those and we'll start to recognize those. But all of these are Pythagorean triples. For instance, like this one right here would mean that 12 squared plus 16 squared is equal to 20 squared. And in fact, that's true because 144 plus 256 equals 400. That adds up to 400, so that would be a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so let's remember what the converse of the Pythagorean theorem would say. So the converse says if the lengths of the three sides of a triangle satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, or the Pythagorean equation, then the triangle is... Now remember what the regular Pythagorean theorem said. It said, if you have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse. So the if part was referring to the fact that you have a right triangle, and the then part of the statement was referring to the fact that there's that characteristic, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, a converse just flips the if and then parts. So this one says what we ended with last time, if the lengths of the three sides satisfy the Pythagorean equation, in other words, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. So that's what the converse says. In other words, if we looked at these segments over here, and I said, okay, these are of lengths 3, 4, and 5. Make a triangle out of them. What type of triangle would we end up with? Well, if we start to put them together, we have something like that. And then if we measure the angle there, So I'm going to measure this angle using my protractor here, see if I can get this without taking too much time on it. Okay, notice that that angle is 90 degrees right here. So we have a 90 degree angle, therefore this is a right triangle. And you're saying, well, duh, Mr. Swigum, I knew that was going to turn out to be a right triangle. Well, sometimes we assume things because we know the context, and you knew that we were talking about the Pythagorean theorem here, but if you just started off with three lengths of segments, just try to make any triangle with these three segments that is not a right triangle. Could you do it? And the answer would be no. No matter how you twisted and turned these three segments, since they're of length three, four, and five, the only way you can put them together and make a triangle is if the triangle ends up being a right triangle. The same thing is going to be true with these segments down here that are 8, 15, and 17 units long. I'm not going to take the time to do that here, but we could go through that investigation and make a triangle out of these three segments, and you would find out the only way you can make a triangle out of them is if that triangle turns out to be a right triangle. And that really is the application of 
or the example for the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so what that means down here, and you can read the little history connection over here. It talks about how Pythagorean theorem and right triangles were used to set up borders in, in Egypt. Sorry for the interruption there. But down here, the question is, do these lengths make a right triangle? So we're going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Because if a squared plus b squared does equal c squared, then we know it's a right triangle. If it doesn't, then it's not a right triangle. So let's take a look here. So we've got 1.2 is the short, shortest side there. So 1.2 and then 1.6 and then 2. Is 1.2 squared plus 1.6 squared equal to 2 squared? Well, 1.2 squared is 1.44. 1.6 squared is 2.56. And 2 squared is 4. Is 1.44 plus 2.46 equal to 4? Yes, it is. So 4 is equal to 4. So yes, this must be a right triangle, the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. Example number 2. Let's try that with 10, 20, and 30. 10 squared plus 20 squared, does that equal to 30 squared? And we can even put a little question mark behind it, like we're asking the question. Well, 10 squared is 100, and 20 squared is 400, and 30 squared is 900. Hopefully you're seeing that this doesn't work out, because 100 plus 400 is 500, and that is not equal to 900. The answer to that is no. So all those, these, well, actually, now that I'm looking at this, these won't even form a triangle, right? Remember from earlier this year, we said that the two shorter sides of a triangle have to add up to longer than the longest side. 10 plus 20 equals 30. So we know for sure, actually, if you remember that right from the start, you'd know that this would not make a right triangle because, in fact, it doesn't make any triangle. Look back to earlier this year for our properties, and you will remember that one. The two shorter legs have to add up to longer than the longest side. All right, next one. Let's make sure that we put these in order, because the 16 is the shortest leg, or the shortest side, and 30 would be the next one. And if this is a right triangle, then 34 would have to be the hypotenuse. So that has to go on the other side of the equal sign. Is a squared plus b squared equal to c squared here? Well, 16 squared is 256, 30 squared is 900, and 34 squared is 1,156. Do those two add up? Yes, they do. 256 plus 900 is 1,156. So if I put question marks behind these, like I was asking a question, yes, that in fact is a right triangle with length 16, 30, and the hypotenuse of 34. Last example, and I think hopefully you're getting how we would check this. So let's come up with the shortest leg, which is 86. So it's 86 squared plus the next shortest leg, 207 squared. Is that equal to 221 squared? 86 squared is 7,396. 207 squared is 42,000. 849, and 221 squared is 48,841. Does that work out, is the question. And that does not work out. These work to 50,245, and does that equal 48,841, question mark? No, it does not. So this would not be a right triangle. And that is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem and how you would use it to determine if the triangle is a right triangle.